Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm here, your host, Seraphine. Uh, today I have a guest, and we'll be talking about uh, parenting. As you all know, those are some of the areas that most of us uh, are affected parenting and family. We are affected and uh, the things we can't do away with. Uh, we want to learn, but we never give a lot of attention and seriousness that it deserves. And many a times we run to sort for solutions instead of uh, building, uh, creating basic uh, foundations. And so today I thought this is one of the things I would address on this channel. And so if you are here, it's your first time to, to this channel, please subscribe, comment, show us love by liking this video because I'm sure you will learn a lot. There's a lot in store for you. I have an expert. And uh, without much ado, let me invite her. She introduces herself and she will tell us what she's going to cover today. My name is Masi Masiga. A co-founder of Zawadi Atan Crafts, where we run a program called Let's Bond. It's a program where we help families build coping skills and we bring families together to do fun things, love each other, and stand by each other. Uh, thanks, Seraphim, for uh, inviting me to this program. I'm very sure we learn a lot. I'm also here to learn, and thank you for viewing this program. Yes, Seraphim? Yes. So the ball is in your court. I'm also here to learn uh, more about family. Of course, you come from families, but no, from your experience and your professionalism and the more knowledge that you have, I'll be happy if you shed more light. Okay. Uh, when Corona struck the world, we were all told to go home. Our jobs closed, our schools closed, our recreation centers closed, the bus closed, even the church closed, and you're told to go home. You are actually being told to go back to your family. And by the end of the day, you will discover when all is said and done, your family is everything. The ones who sit with you in hospital when you are sick. The ones who bury you when you die. They're the only ones who will know what you don't have, what you have. And the only ones who will really accept you no matter what you are. But the funny bit is we invest in so many things and we don't invest in family. We don't really invest quality time or enough finances or enough commitment in this one unit that forms everything that we are. Um, just a question. If you were to calculate the amount of time you spend at work, I'm talking about the quality time you spend at work when you are concentrating, you are alert, you are present at work, and you weigh it against the number and the amount of time you spend with your family. I'm talking about a lot time. You are present. Seraphim, how would you weigh the two? Give just charged. In fact, the truth is we give our families leftover times. Mm -hmm. We go home tired. Actually, it's resting hours. Mm -hmm. So we go home to rest. So I agree with you that we give so much time to the world, to people away, people outside. So it's possible that we don't even give family any time because when we are at home, we are either eating, sleeping, watching TV, replaying mails on phone. It's not the quality time you give your boss. You know, it's true. when your boss works in the room, walks into a room and you give them attention, is that same attention your spouse or your child will say when I walk into a room, my parent was attentive? Is it? When you give quality time, <laughs> I'm no. feeling guilty. I'm feeling guilty. When you get very sick, who is your boss? Or when it matters, who is your boss? Who is your colleague? Who is that friend you always got for TV? When it really, really, really matters. When you're in a financial fix, actually, mm, you're in a police and you need to be bailed out. Who is your friend? Isn't it your brother, your sister, your mother, your husband, your child that you look for? So are we being fair to family? It's this box where we want to receive from, but we never want to give. True. 
and it does not pay us to sell what we need to buy what we want. It doesn't help us. But we sell family more often than not to buy all the other things around us. Okay, let's talk about our lifestyles. You know, we are the basics that we look for. Yes, I need shelter, I need clothing, I need, you know, the basics. A parent will always say in their head, once I live in a safe estate, then I'll spend the living with children. Then you move to that estate and you're like, once I buy a piece of land around Nairobi, I will give them to my children. Then you buy the land and you're like, once I buy a good car, I will give them to my children. So the demands, the desires, and yes. yes. Then you hit 70 years old and those kids Still don't, chasing. You know, those kids don't know you and they don't care about you and they don't come on to see you. Sad truth. Yes, when you start telling people the way your children are very bad, you really spend so much on them. You've invested so much yes. on them. Yes, you spend all your healthy years on them, and they are not spending any time on you. You never value them. You spend more time with your boss and with your car and with your No, life. stop making it sound so bad. <laughs> no, we were busy looking for money to pay school fees, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, you're making it sound like, you know, the gift is too much. School fees is... Okay, yes, they will go through the system, but did they ever know you? Maybe with that school fees, they even know the Minister of Education more than they know you. Because you said them to him. They know their school teacher more. They know the person who sweeps in their school more than they know you. Maybe your volume is too high. <laughs> You're shouting. <laughs> I should turn it down. You're shouting. <laughs> when you fellow parents, it's us again. It's too much, right? So we need money, we need those jobs, we need promotions. We are giving it all our all, but the challenge is we are losing. We are torn apart. We follow. Maybe she has answers for us. Write to us that comment, ask those questions, engage us, and let's just let's see what you're thinking. But to me, from where I'm sitting, I'm already guilty. Okay, a, a basic question I usually ask, when did you become a parent? I, but now you are too much. <laughs> so I explained <laughs> it that way. Yes. See, I'm a parent. People are supposed to be parents. So why did you become a parent? Because society told you to become a parent. Oh, you're asking them, not me. I'm asking all the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, not me. <laughs> me, I know. <laughs> It's you, yeah. the person viewing, answer her. Yes, Why did you become a parent? parent? Did you just find yourself as a parent? Many of us just find ourselves as parent. Many of us is because society tells us to become parent. We know, I go to school, I finish, I get married, I get children. I raise children, I mean, it's just what we found our ancestors doing. And so we pick it up, yes. We pick it up and we just go on. Yes, our ancestors did parenting, but do we know our ancestors had social structures to support families that don't exist in this generation at all? I mean, if I got a child by 50 or uh, let me say 55 years ago, I would get this child, the grandma of the child will come and carry the child. So those 40 days, I wouldn't even need to have a house guard or who or who or no. I'll be cooked for, I'll be nursed, I'll be done for anything. Actually, you are pampered. Yes, and this child is born into a society. You know, a family setup. The grandparents will come and ask, who have you named after? The uncles, the aunties. And then this child is raised up in a community. Those are the days you would make a mistake on the road and the neighbor finds you and beats you up. And then they tell your parent and your parent also beats you up again. You know, there was the social fiber that held the family together. Then school came and you went into Nairobi where you don't even know your neighbor. You have no idea who is the next door. You have children in the house. Your neighbor cannot even tell you your child was insulting so and so. You are like, mm, what who sent you? Like? Exactly, who sent you? We are in this place of mind your own business. Yes. Now you spend all your hours at work. The people who see what is happening to your child don't even tell you anything about your child. Some of us leave our house before they wake up and we come back when they are fast asleep. We know how they look so like. Literally, yes. we are not there. 
Yes. And with the broken fiber of society, we are actually raising kids not knowing that these children really need the pillars that help them. So if you answer the question, why am I a parent? It's easy to know what do I need as a parent. Your objective. Yes. And now we are talking about the parenting toolkit. Before I become a parent, what do I need? One, you need to know that children will always grow up. Fortunately, and unfortunately, children will always grow up. You cannot postpone the life of your child. The child you have today, Seraphim, is the child you'll have tomorrow. No. Yes. The event you have today, my dear, you won't have her tomorrow. And you never be given a redo or a rehearsal. So if you don't treasure what you have today, tomorrow you'll have a more enlightened child, a more advanced child, a more grown-up child. And you'll never have time to come back here to make up whatever you didn't do. So the best is to learn as much as you can put in when they are still young so that you grow with them. Children will always grow up. They will always grow up. How they turn out is what matters. But they will always grow up. You can't say, because I have so much up to do, I have to go abroad, I have to do this. They will pause and wait for the day that their mother will come back. Mm -hmm. They will grow up. They are not waiting. No. Children always grow up. It's actually a good thing, you know. But it's, also, it's also a challenging thing. Very challenging. So, make use of the time you have now with your children. And even for our spouses, even for our parents, at the time you wake up and you are, your mother is dead, you know, or your father is dead, your grandfather is gone and you're wondering, okay, I thought after I achieved this and I went back, you'll be there to celebrate. Yes, they'll be proud of me. Why not make them proud of you every day that you live? Each step. Yes. And the truth is, as much as we do need our spouse and our children, we need our parents. They are part of our society. We need our brothers and sisters. We need those cousins that nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> these cousins, we don't call each other. We but meet at family gatherings once in a while. Yes, my mother always says, when you and Nairobi meet each other, before you bring someone here and we tell you, this is your first cousin, or this is, you know. <laughs> Why we need each other? Everything is. When you educate your son, you, ed you educate your son's son. In short, your children carry from you the essence and they just deliver it to their children. Generation. Yes, generation. I always say, your children are an improvement. So what you are, look at yourself and you measure yourself. What you are, they will improve on who you are. So determine, I mean, what do you want to do with people? They are better versions of us. They are better versions of you. What do you want them to build on? Do you want them to build on your waking up screaming in the morning? What's wrong with you? <laughs> or do you want them to remember now, your compassion? No, Master, yes. um, I'm thinking. At the same time, we are challenged mm -hmm. that. Uh, some of us, we are doing parenting, we are bringing up our kids the way we were brought up. Mm -hmm. And someone doesn't approve, I don't know whoever it is, I don't have facts on this, but someone somewhere doesn't approve mm -hmm. of some of us, of our bringing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you talk of a better version, I don't know, make it easier for me. Like the life I live, if I want it better, and if I grew up in a bad, now let's talk of people who came from, okay, but like abusive families. Yes. Mm? Yes. If you talk of better versions, chances mm. are high, that is generational. These people transfer the bitterness yes. to their families. Yes. Those people grow up on their own. They don't have family, extended family warmth around them. Mm -hmm. They always want to be on their own. Yes. Am I bringing up my kids on the same? You know, Sarah, what you should not they will not grow up the way you tell them to grow up. They will grow up the way they see you grow up with them. If you grow up in an abusive family and you never want to it, you might be abusive from them. They will just pick that up.
go to school and bully the other kids. So the teacher keeps on calling you to school every time. Your child is a bully. Your child is a bully. And all you're doing is beating up this child. But the child is just picking the abuse from you as the parent. You know, if you read the Bible to them, but don't leave the Bible to them, they will take what you leave as so you So with kids, it's more what they see than what they hear. Yes. What they see and what the essence they gather from you. You know, there is the, what do I say, the warmth, mm -hmm. the what, the, what you get from your environment, you know. Mm -hmm. You can walk into a room and you just feel, no, I'm not wanted here. You know, mm -hmm. nobody has done anything, nobody has said anything, nobody has even talked to you. Mm -hmm. They feel unwanted. Yes. You can come to my home and I'm smiling very brightly, but you just know, no, 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 yeah, you're not working. Okay. Yes. It's more of the essence that we are thinking. Not exactly what someone is doing. I might do all the right things, but my essence is wrong. You know. So they pick your humanity. Let me say that. Yeah. Your humanity. Yeah. They pick who you are. And we may not realize that. Yes. We don't realize many times. And they make it, they make a better version of that. Either that, or they live their life struggling to get out of your shadows, you know. Oh, yeah. So they have to do the bulwark. They have to live their life today, and they have to get out of the shadow you create for them. Because the abuse is calling them back. Mm -hmm. But they have to keep on telling themselves, no, I don't want to be like my mother. I don't want to be like my father. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have so to struggle. Yes. Yes. It's a struggle. They waste so much of their time trying to get out of who you are to make themselves. It's... Many people struggle. Many of us struggle to leave the things we built when we were growing up. Which is, yeah. Is that what brings the, 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 this, this notion of uh, reconciling with your past? So many people in adulthood are uh, struggling to, to reconcile with their past. They are looking for, is it called what, closure or something? Yes. They, they're like, they are seeking for answers. <laughs> And there is no one even to answer those questions. You may not be bold enough to face your parent, mm -hmm. but you are struggling with your adult life. Mm -hmm. So it was way back. Yes. You picked it up. Formative years for every human being is between 0 and 12. Not actually between 0 and 12, but between the time you are conceived mm -hmm. to 12 years. From conception. Yes, from conception to 12 years. That's what you call formative ages. Everything you pick from there forms your mind. So you just build up on that when you are growing up. So all these investments we do, like <laughs> I took you to a good school. I mean, I can't see why. Actually, that's why maybe we complain a lot. Like we've invested a lot. Uh, we invest on education. We pamper those kids. Mm -hmm. But some, some, somewhere along the road, people just behave weirdly. Yes. And it could not be environment. So it was even the past. They missed out on yes. What did you invest in? Did you invest in the physical person or the inner person? We have to invest in both. We have you, this body here. Then we have your emotions, your will, your personality, your person, your person, but your person inside there. Mm. It's easy to in invest in this one. <laughs> that you can see. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just get money. We deal so much on what we see. Yeah, we just get money, buy a few clothes, buy more books, take to a better school, buy a new cup, what we see. But what you don't know is who you are inside informs what we see. So tell us. Mm -hmm. I think I need to know from the time you conceived, what 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 us we have been? Some of us, we already even, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, <laughs> am I even still safe where I'm, uh, I am already? Because I already have kids, I have a, an 11, I have a 7, I have a 3, almost 4, and I have a 1. Mm -hmm. So, uh, a parent who is, uh, the kid is already adolescent, or a young adult. Or le let's save this one before. <laughs> can we save this one who is still, <laughs> who was just conceived? Yes, you can. And it's simple, okay. Yes, simple. <laughs> First of all, as a woman, you know, you are the carrier of this child. Your physical health before you conceive a child is extremely, extremely, extremely important. They talk about kids lacking folic acid. Nowadays, mothers have to be made to take those tablets, I don't know, like mm -hmm. what. They actually advise you need to start taking them three months before you conceive. Oh. Medically, you start taking them three months before 
before you conceive. It's just that that's new. Most of us don't plan. Most of us get children, so <laughs> <laughs> we find our way already. You know. Yes, but this child will survive on the nutrients in your body. Really, the child eats from you. So if your health is not as high, you simply transfer that to your unborn child automatically. And then this baby growing up in your womb is actually a human being. They get to a point where they hear what's happening outside. If a mother has stress, it simply transfers to the child. In fact, there is um, there's something that can be very amazing. They say when a mother is sick, or when an expectant woman is sick, stem cells from the child in the womb try to heal the mother. So the child depends on you as you depend on that child. So um, the stress you have, you get depressed and you're pregnant. You give back to a child who has depression, who has tender days, who has tender days, who has depression. That's so sad. So they always say, I remember when I was pregnant with my first child. Mm. My sister called me and told me, Maxi, be happy. As the only day she told me. So you give us a happy baby. <laughs> Yes, and you know with the happiness mm. will come the immunity of this child. A happy child has very, very high immunity, physical immunity. A sick child, a depressed child has very low immunity. Comes to brain development. A happy child has a healthy brain, a depressed child. So you disposing this child to be number one in class, and you bag them down with depression when they were still in your womb, and you are here telling them. Uh, you should perform better. You should do better. How come you cannot grasp the things that I used to do? Mm. And you messed. Yes. You messed this baby right from the womb. So we always tell even the spouses, you have an expectant to you. Treat them well. Be nice. Be nice. Bring. 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 They want a blue Coca-Cola. Bring. Bring. Create one if it doesn't exist. Have you ever discovered even the matatus, the makandas and the drivers don't have an expectant in Nah, sure. Sure. So why should the one you are living in your house have a Funny thing, yeah. people, just like you said, mm. uh, we get a lot of love, yes. and many a times, on, from strangers, yes, outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, the places we call home, where we are supposed to get love and warmth, sad truth is, is where we get the opposite. Yes. Because people now will be complaining. You see, this attitude. <laughs> When someone is expect and people make fun of that, mm -hmm. you know, guys, hope you're learning and please change. You know, we need love. I mean, yes. <laughs> provide those things. <laughs> <laughs> and then at a common satan we need a happy baby and actually a normal, <laughs> not even just happy, a normal baby. Yes, we need a normal baby. And you discover we are naturally tuned to protect predators. You don't think about it, you know. It happens so naturally. It's something that is inborn in a human being because we subconsciously know the child this woman is carrying means that natural. Actually, we are always treated sacred. Yes. Yeah. There are times I would be in town and the city hopper would be like, stop lining up, kuja mm -hmm. you know? inkia That's true. Naturally, we know we are supposed to treat them well, but apparently, we, we can't people you live within the same house. Mm. <laughs> that natural mm. goes somewhere else. <laughs> That's not a little girl somewhere. I don't know. But many men are trying. Let's not be hard on them. Actually, men are always kind. Many men. Funny thing. Yes, in yeah, the house. Yeah, kind. When they buy the them away, they buy the name. They bring the fun they and they go back over for They endure the process. <laughs> <laughs> they endure the process. Give it to them. Most of them really try. Okay, and then, yeah, your child hears when they're in the womb. So talk to your child. Talk to your child in that. All oh, this is formation. We are, yes. we are still forming the baby. Communication is child. Formative state. In fact, you know, expectant women touch their tummy a lot. And it's and we can just communication with your child. We can talk. And you'll discover you touch your knee, they'll tell you the baby kicks. Mm. It's com yes. So you communicate the baby communicates back. You talk, mm. the child they respond. Yes, the child responds. Uh, sing to your child or listen to music. Music is very good for boosting the brain cells, even for the unborn child. Good music, add good music. Of course, good music. What's <laughs> bad music? <laughs> not all music is good. Not, not all music is music. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, when this child is born, touch is very important for a child. Touch. Touch. Skin to skin touch. You didn't even see a newborn baby, you such thing, they scrub very comfortable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. the thing, they respond. Yes. Mm. Actually, for a baby, true. you will feed them, clothe them, talk to them, you don't touch them, they will die. Hmm? Yes. Dying like death. Yes. Either that or they don't develop socially. Mm. They start these cold characters. Mm. Yes, they just missed touch. You know, mm. Mm. we do the kangaroo. Oh, yeah. Because that touch is just life. Touch is life. Mm. Even us grown ups need touch. It's just that mm. we've been told to be hard and all that. But I honestly, each person, uh, I'm sure, yes. we love to be cuddled. Touch know. is very important. Mm. Say that to the men. <laughs> <laughs> they also enjoy it anyway. They pretend to be tough. They actually enjoy it, but they, they don't say they enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> no, not you, not you watching, not you. <laughs> When you carry your newborn, yes. So we touch. Mm -hmm. The touch is very important. Like skin to skin, mm. skin to skin touch is very important for a baby. Mm. Okay. Last year there was a discussion going around Facebook. Yes. Of fathers talking the way they do so much work and the way they grow up to take care of their mothers. Oh, I missed the discussion. Tell and me men, about it. Men were very, very bitter. We encourage these children. Mm. They come home. They give you two thousand when your wife is seeing. Mm. Then they go to the kitchen and they give their mother ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> and yet they have struggled so much. Then their mother comes and says, "The money the child gave you, let's go and buy food." And she's hiding her ten thousand. It's unfair. It's, it's simple. The women bonded with their babies from conception. Oh yeah. They the touch, bond is... Yes, they touch that baby. They talk to that baby. And the skin to skin is a must because when you're breastfeeding your baby, it's actually skin to skin. Oh, yeah, it beats the logic. And they, yeah. most babies love breastfeeding, you know. You mm. get them off at mm. two years, they're mm. still coming mm. back, you know. Mm. So a child grows up knowing mom is everything, naturally, unconsciously. And when in high school you are busy screaming at them for being teenagers, their mother is protecting them. So as grown-ups, you know. And I think we make it now, even mothers, uh, it's a mean from our end. Right? You find it a, a mean gesture. Because many a times, mm -hmm. uh, we bond with these kids from yes. conception, imagine, mm -hmm. breastfeeding, all that process. But we only call on dads when mm -hmm. it comes to discipline. So you see, they, they always come in a picture of the bad parent and the good parent. Mm, the good parent and the bad parent, you know. Yes. That's Sorry, 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 sorry. We missed out, you didn't mic. <laughs> oh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Did we record anything? No, it's fine. On the camera, direct. So we, maybe we can just start from We will restart. Touching. From the touching. We can't miss yeah. that one, it's very important. <laughs> My fault, I missed out. Both of us, that's what it's happening. Oh, even you know. Yeah. You were saying uh, touch skin to skin, no, nothing like no clothes, but direct contact. Yes. Skin to skin is very important for the baby, even for grown ups. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Who doesn't want to be covered anyway? <laughs> yes. Mm. But for the baby, it's a matter of life and death. It's a matter of development. It's a matter See? of life. Yes, who they are. So there was this discussion going on on Facebook mm. last year, mm. and the men were complaining that they invest, they do everything. Mm. Then these children grow up, mm. and they only see their mothers. So, poor men. So a child will come at home talk to you people and give the father 2,000 in front of the mother. Mm. Then goes to the kitchen and gives the mother 10,000. Hiding. But naturally, I mean, why are they complaining? You see, just what you said, the, the process we go through, you know, that we bond, so we take a lot of time, mm -hmm. and I think it comes so natural, mm -hmm. because uh, many a times it, uh, it sounds like mean from us moms, mm -hmm. but maybe unconsciously, we don't know. We only call out dads to step in when it comes to discipline matters. Yes. So naturally the kids view their dads like the bad person. And the because they only come in when they are annoyed just to know. And the mom is the, I mean, the super the best. Yes. Because we cuddle, we, 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 we show fondness, affection, you know. 
everything. And that's another very important point to note on the parenting toolkit. Yes, please. You have to have agreed on a method of discipline before you consider the baby. You have to know what discipline do we allow in our house. There are people who get into marriage knowing I will beat my children properly. Because that's what happens. Yes, that's, that's and you get married to someone who says you should never beat your children. So you, you beat and they say don't beat. And the child knows, okay. So it's beat, don't beat, and go there. Mm. Then so the sport. child turns one parent mm. against the other parent. If you do not have the same method of disciplining children, even your own marriage Leave alone the parenting. Piece. Separate. Yes. Mm. Even your own marriage is in danger. So discipline, you have to agree on discipline even before you come to this child. You have to know is this child out? Is it you stand in the corner and look at the wall? Is it the benefits you will withdraw? What kind of thing is it about? And right now you have to be careful with this one on six. You get up that bed, but if they call one on six, you will explain to the police where you are beating. They call who? For my child. It's called on six. The child helpline. They call and say my parent is physically I don't, I don't want to discuss that today because yeah, I know. it's actually taught in schools. When she was in PP PP two. I do I came home and I told her to take her plate to the kitchen and she told me, Mommy, you are abusing me. No. <laughs> are you are you there already? So <laughs> I asked them. She was in PP one and PP two and I asked her. Why? Mommy, you're making me work. <laughs> who, who taught her that in school? I had to teach her. Classmates? No, of sure. course, it's taught. But um, if you teach child rights and you don't teach child responsibilities, mm. they tend to be satisfied. Because the responsibility will say you have to help. But I'm sure, I'm sure whoever mentioned the their rights had mentioned their rights, the kids just choose what works for them. They're smart, you know? Of course. They're smart. Of yes. course. Mm. Uh, well, I was impressed at her level of reasoning at her age, but I knew I have to be careful. Yeah. Mm. I worked with one on six down in mm. Yes. <laughs> so what happens there? Like, really no, it's okay. No, it's actually a really good platform for kids. It's um, what do I say? It's a, an emergency life for children. Mm. So when a child is going through abuse, they wait for one on six. And actually, physical. What do you say? I will need to check this out, but most likely it can be physical because it is safe. No, what I'm just wondering, I think uh, mm -hmm. that kind of uh, arrangement needs to be well defined. Like when you mm -hmm. talk of abuse with yes. African parents, you know, how extreme is that abuse? Just like you said, mm -hmm. we need to teach responsibility and abuse. Yes. Because a lazy kid, mm -hmm. I'm sure, will take you just cleaning, arranging their room to be an abuse. When some of us, uh, when we were brought up, or even those kids who are in rural, mm -hmm. uh, rural mostly, mm -hmm. the things they do, you can't compare to those yes, things. They have more responsibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what they surely say is alternative discipline methods. That's what they ask for now. For another day. We need a whole... <laughs> <laughs> to the issue that. is if you use the bells and if you use the cooking stick and if you use the stick, need all that. Mm -hmm. And the other... Yeah, as in beating, beating, mm -hmm. physical, yes. Yeah. So they say alternative display methods. And that will be their main. <laughs> they send it in color for. So you agree with this that on a formative stage, they're allowed. Discipline should be part of anyway. This you should agree on it with your spouse before this baby comes. Because you should know, if someone is 21 years old and they're still in your house, you still apply this plea. Yeah, this plea. Depends. Now, just like yeah, you said, the method, one, method of this But one parent will tell you this is a grown up, you are an adult. Yes. So if you didn't agree, I mean, you'll fight. You mm. will no longer be disciplined the child, you'll be fighting in this conflict. Yeah. Mm. You will actually have Tara, but you know, mm. because this will resist. resist. Yes. Mm. And then your other issues will start boiling down to the child discipline issues. So parenting toolkit, this please inside there.
Yeah. Communication is there, but discipline is still there. So on this discipline, you say you have to agree before the baby becomes. And discipline is actually not really beating or discipline is actually drawing boundaries, you know. Before you even think of beating a child, have you ever explained to this child in a way they can understand that it is wrong? Do you even yourself know what the boundaries in your house are? Because you know, they're just yeah, random boundaries, no, you know. I get you. My kids know, I usually tell them, you don't hurt each other and you don't hurt yourself. For me, that is a defined boundary, yeah. you know. So there are very many things you don't find me making so much noise over. You made it clear and they know, yes, mm -hmm. but you don't hurt yourself and you don't hurt someone else. By someone else I mean anyone, be it the visitor, be it the girl who helps me in the house, be it a fellow parent, be it a relative. We don't hurt each other and we don't hurt ourselves. For that matter, my children cannot shout or insult the girl who helps me inside the house. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go. Because you are deliberately hurting someone else. Mm -hmm. We will have and to actually have to teach them with those around us. Yes. Mm -hmm. They don't shout back at me, you know. But they are very clever. They'll be like, Mom, today you shouted at me. And I'll be like, oh, I shouted? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do about this? Uh, you talk of shouting. Yes. Uh, I'm sure many parents of... Uh, Toddlers mm -hmm. uh, uh, cannot even put this together. What you are saying doesn't make sense. We took a ground, you know. This, uh, can you, someone I remember on social media, some mm -hmm. Facebook, yeah, someone was asking, can these kids just prepare to school in the morning without shouting? Is there anyone who prepares them quietly? Toddlers. Why are they starting to school? I mean, the toddler, you know, they need three, okay. three, four, <laughs> not three, three, not Terrible too. <laughs> you don't even go there. When you are handling a child, you should always ask yourself, do they understand me? Because if they don't understand what you're aiming at, even if you scream, you'll scream until your voice goes hoarse, they don't know what you're screaming at. And, uh, no wonder. You, you know, just sometimes feel like they're ignoring us. No, you, you just have to shout, shout and they're, they're like taking, they're keeping calm, looking at you like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> they have no idea what you're making noise at. They just know you're making noise. And they will grow up knowing my mother to shout at me every morning. That becomes also a mental issue. <laughs> I remember my son one time told the dad, uh, uh, Daddy put booze about you. Yes, you know what I mean. I was <laughs> like, that was harsh. You know what I'm screaming at? Booze about you. Wow. And then we mm. are in the digital era. Our kids need to be explained to. But now it's another point I have to make. Yes, you cannot raise children, your children in your generation. You raise them in their generation. They don't belong to your generation. I think that's the challenge we have. Stop forcing them to fit where you were. You didn't even have a phone. Even the Mulikamus, you didn't even have it when you were there. And you remember what I told you? That we are struggling, all of us, to do our way. And we always reply, yes. we never used to do like this. My mom wouldn't do this. Mm -hmm. uh, we never grew up this way. Yeah, we are doing Pick our style. Value. Pick the value, but you have to change the method. Pick the compassion, pick the love, but the method you have to change it to fit into their generation. I think one thing I would agree with you, that just like any other course, we need just to, to invest in parenting. Yes. I don't know. Yeah? Yes, we do. From no, what you're saying, mm -hmm. it's, it's like uh, we just need a full course to train us on parenting. Most of us, we just got ourselves with kids. Yes. Did we even plan? We finished school. The only thing we planned was which hospital are we going to? And you know, I think even our our leaders tell us finish school first before you get children. Actually, that's, you finish school. Yeah, that's the gospel. <laughs> that's the gospel. As long as I finish school and get children. And now and you then, see, I'll just challenge you on parenting because now when mm -hmm. you talk of plan, plan that these cases are uh, teenage pregnancy is just on um, on a very high rate yes. currently. Yes. So uh, I'm sure that teenage mom is even wondering what you're talking about. Yeah. When you talk of planning, mm -hmm. you see, now this can only apply to certain age. People who are organized and they knew now I'm ready to get married, the, the ideal. Let me talk of the ideal. Yes. But now the reality, you know, I know. we have so many parents 
who are not prepared, like the teenage girls, and the, the, the young dads are not even there. So when you're talking of the touch, the dad role, or the formative stage, does this explain why our society currently, we have just an upside way of kids and human beings, so weird. Mm -hmm. Teenage pregnancy is a lot of a child is not a child. Yes. And so that's at the beginning, children don't just grow up. <laughs> so that, no, these are two children raising Yes, and they both grow up. The how is the issue, yes, but they both grow up. The important thing is, when we raise our ch children, let me just take you back a bit. Yes. When we raise our children, we teach them a lot of things, isn't it? Mm. You teach them how to put on clothes. Yes. You teach them how to go to school, how to read, how to use the computer. ETC, ETC, ETC. You might actually even teach them sex education. Yes. But do you ever teach your children how they will raise their children? Do you even talk about that? Do we ever pass that knowledge to them? Do you have the knowledge ourselves? Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's begin from there. You see these things I'm hearing from you. I've just told you I already have a, a, a teenage girl in my house. I'm, I'm, I'm learning today. So I run to her today and start to come here. Now when you become a parent, no, she's no, like... No, no, no. Children is not a class teaching. It has to be seamless. It, you know, flows. Mm -hmm. no es especially the teenagers. Teenagers don't like lectures at all. When you are a teenager, do you like lectures? Have you as it we talk? I will create something to do. I will just get busy. Mm -hmm. But you are in the kitchen with this teenage girl, you know. And she is talking to you about her friend who has gotten pregnant as a small child. Mm -hmm. You can easily slip in the Amy's. How is your friend bringing up your, the child? So you grab the opportunity. Yes. How is your friend bringing up the child? And when you're talking about it, you can easily throw in so many things. You know, this child doesn't know. You know, they get that knowledge. You are driving with your child and like, oh, auntie is having a wedding. That's a new need to talk to your child about marriage. As long as it's age appropriate. Because there are things you will tell your teenage I can't tell my daughter, I can't tell my daughter, you know. And you will always get the cues from the child when they are ready to learn. They will always ask her an ambiguous question about something. Yeah, that and reminds me. You know, when you are talking of uh, forming formative stage, you, you say it's from 0 to, to 12. Yes. Uh, it's a bit tricky we, with the social media and everything that uh, we, we have, you know, everything about it. Uh, that, that those topics that are a bit uh, sensitive and many parents will agree with me we find it challenging as much they're important they're sensitive but now which language like sex education uh, I'm sure many parents find it so hard which is the best approach to deal with this because uh, currently we may not wait to 10 kids at 7 already is asking you a bit uh, very <laughs> very ambiguous, you know, you're like, how do I even explain? Whatever you fear to call has already called it. In his... There's something I always talk about sex, especially when talking about our teenagers and our children have sex, that most people go quiet when I say it. We will tell our children sex is bad. Sex is not bad. It's the age that is wrong. I mean, you tell our teenagers sex is bad, they try and they like it. You think they still believe it? There's nothing wrong with sex. Something wrong with the age they're judging the sex. Sex is okay. That's where kids come from. It's just the timing that is wrong. Yeah. You shouldn't have sex when you're not responsible enough to do the consequences. But there's nothing wrong with it. Let's be frank. But I think this now we can talk about it at 10, 10, 11, 12, right? When they bring up the topic. Uh -huh. It might even come out. Because someone told me by the time they bring up the topic, you are late. You're supposed to introduce. They might not bring it up the way you think. They not come and ask you the sex. Most of them will come with this boy girl relationships. Yeah. Friendships. Mm -hmm. And then you ask the leading questions to know how much are they able to carry. You know. Valentine's Day. Did any of your kids receive anything? Oh, me, me, you see the hey, letters. But did they receive anything Please. from other kids? I, I, I need to find out. You need to know. <laughs> 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 no, I'm 
I'm going to that. I'm coming. That's why it starts. <laughs> Nowadays, even baby class, if you want to get married, you're making you. me feel a very bad parent. No, no. am I they, that useless? No, they come I don't know. You, Mom, Paul is my boyfriend, but in the five years old. Yeah. Eight years innocent. <laughs> but that is where sex education starts from. But of course, you don't go for the big things. Oh, yeah. Who is Paul, my classmate? How old is he? Yeah. How you see your friend? What do you do together? You know, such a thing. The child will never exactly know you're headed to. But you will teach the child how to mm. throw boundaries mm. at that age. Okay. You teach your children how to wash their bodies. This is it. Yes. Um, my children at three years, I actually I started at two years teaching them the body parts nobody should ever touch. Two? Yes. Is that so early? Yeah, I'm thinking my baby, oh no, two. I'm mm. not telling you anything funny. I'm just telling you nobody should ever touch you. So how do you explain to a two-year-old? Yes, that's just say like, when you put your hands here. <laughs> no, you don't beat. You just talk. Stop. When we go to, no, you we go to the stop. bathroom, normally I wash the child. With their private parts, I tell them, wash your, I just training them, wash your private parts yourself. yourself. Yes. At first they don't do it well, so I will yeah, redo yeah, it. One, yeah. And in the process, I will tell you, no, nobody, okay, the whole of your body is special. So, I don't expect people to keep on touching your body, you know. But there are parts of your body that nobody should ever, ever touch. And I can tell them your private parts are very special. Nobody should ever touch them apart from yourself. And maybe my baby she's washing you. <laughs> now, please, on that list, we yes. add that currently we add mouth. It's now private because of yes. COVID. We added parts, <laughs> parts that are very private. <laughs> yes, that you don't touch. And then they ask me why. I tell them because they are very, very special. For a two, three, four, five year old. That explanation is good enough. It's too special to be touched. <laughs> that is it. Yes. And I add, if anyone tries to touch you, tell mommy or tell your teacher. So they know. They, and even tell her, when you are playing with your brother and sister, keep an eye. She knows how to. <laughs> it's you, I think you are overloading this girl. You are giving her too much time. Yeah, at her age. She, she, she shouldn't be enjoying game, sleeping around, <laughs> checking on her siblings. Do you know, have you ever done this, um, the, order, the birth order? No, what's that? First born are natural leaders. They are born with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First bonds are second parents. We don't overload them, but it comes, you know. And for me, I always say the older child looks out for the younger. Yeah, naturally. It comes with some response. Because even in Yora, I will be like, in Yora, look out for me. You know, yeah. she is older. There are things she will know that Rune will not know. Mm. But it is protecting. When someone attacks a daughter and in Yora, it's Rune who will jump in front. Is that funny the thing of this protection? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. It, come, uh, it happens. Yeah. Why I would give a girl responsibility is because she understands mm. more. Yeah. But trust when they become teenagers, it's actually don't have to protect my daughter. I know. <laughs> so all these are parental kits. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah, thing, communication, mm -hmm. set boundaries. Yes. Of course, setting boundaries on display. Yes. So that before you start yelling and shouting, yes, you have explained to them mm -hmm. that there are no go zones. So by the time you even, before you shout, they also are aware that this they have already crossed yes. the red line. And when you talk with your children, these topics come, expound on them, you know. Ah. That small time you have to talk to your children, they ask you questions. Mm -hmm. Try to cover all the topics. They don't out. be a, a yes, no parent. Yes. Mm -hmm. And back to the issue of sex education that you asked. Yes, yes. We cannot fix our children in sex education because we cannot fix ourselves. It has nothing to do with the child. It's a personal yeah, battle with ourselves. ourselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. We carried the value from our forefathers. Yeah, I think so. How? I mean, so I am struggling. How do you expect me to pass it on? No, it's a good topic. Now, about uh, sex, mm -hmm. sex topic or sex education, uh, do you find it normal that dads can do the education to their daughters and their moms can do to their sons? Mm -hmm. What do you what do you have to say over this? Yes, in this era, yes. No one who should be any parent should. In this era, yes. You are a single father, you have a dad. Who are you waiting to come and do the education for you? 
with your neighborhood. So this for me, you know, this leads me to another question now. Mm -hmm. That uh, we, we are told uh, at formative stage, yes. when you talk of, uh, uh, that's where a person is. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm now thinking of that kid with a single parent. How, how do they now capture this? A single parent, of course, single, they could be having uncles or dads. But they, I'm sure they miss out a lot. Do you think it contributes to that person uh, in adulthood life, which affects yes. them when they miss out on this formative stage? Yes, yes, it does. Missing that support from one parent really does affect you growing up. But as I said, the society we are growing up in right now is broken. Yeah, in many ways, mm. that is part of the breaking of the family. But then, you might find a child growing up in a single parent, but in a healthy environment, and one growing up with both parents in a very unhealthy environment. True. Mm -hmm. So That's now between these two children, now who will even say, it's really lucky. No, actually my point was, uh, that single parent shouldn't feel lesser, mm -hmm. or shouldn't feel bad. Mm -hmm. uh, that if the kid turns out with any other thing that you never put in them. Sometimes it was so it was natural. It had nothing to yes. do with you yes. as a person. Family, as I'm saying, there are very many breakages we have in these families. Mm, yeah. At least for a single parent you actually pick and say, you know, mm. his parent is single, they mm. are struggling. Mm. But what about this family that has everybody but it's still broken? Mm. We have our own weaknesses. Mm. You could have we both, think, both yes. parents but still a single you're like single parent in a family. And then we don't have a good parent in any way. Honestly. Not in a single Honestly. home, not in a home with both parents. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You will never be a, actually, a perfect parent. I never lied to myself that I will be a single uh, a perfect parent. Mm -hmm. I simply give it my best. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I simply give it my best. Then that's encouraging. Yes, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm open with my kids. I tell them mommy makes mistakes. Yeah, and they're very good at correcting my mistakes. Actually, it's good they know that you can also make mistakes. Yes. Yeah. It gets me to my other point. Children are not always wrong and parents are not always right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now you want them to fix me with this. Of course. I hope they are watching. <laughs> <laughs> You needed to check this now. You have only smile. <laughs> you shouted. <laughs> you shouldn't shout. Children. We are not always right. And the are kids are always, always not wrong. wrong. And you are not always right. Have you ever heard of the story of a mother who comes home and finds a fifty ball bill? Then they beat up the child. Then they remember they used that fifty ball in money to buy something. Hope you have the guy to come back and apologize. <laughs> Many of them don't apologize. That's harsh. That's Actually, true. someone asked that question That's on sweet. Facebook and That's asked sweet. and asked, "What would you do if you were the father? Uh, what would your mother do if she came home, beat you up, and discovered the money that you stole from her?" I'll give you the money if I were me. Some people say my mother will just cook for me fish. I do know the things parents do to beat around the <laughs> No, I mean that's pride now. <laughs> that's too much pride. We need to swallow our pride. And then coming out and saying I'm sorry. We got yeah. an, we got an African. Eh? But sometimes we exaggerate the beating. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I actually think in this generation I would advise alternative school methods. We are raising thinkers. We are raising digital children. Even people who are asking questions. So you, you, you believe, from what you're telling me, if we followed this parental toolkit, mm -hmm. our society will be different. We will have a different story. Or the world will be a better place to live than yes. what we have. Yes. If you gave your children a little bit more potential. Of the energy we give to our jobs, yes. the energy we give to our friends, and to our, to our entertainment and leisure time, if we give it a little extra attention to our families, yes. then it will make a difference. Yes. You know, most of us know what makes our bosses sleep, isn't it? Yes. Do you know what makes your kids sleep? We invest a lot on others' interests. Yeah. Yeah, but do you know what they like? Do you know whether they are morning people or night people? Not that people who work better than that also work better. Mm -hmm. Even though if your kids are more night people, do you know what cartoon they like watching? We take our families for granted. Do you know who's the best friend? Are they even your own friends? 
Do they even know you as also? Anyway, you know, now I'm asking myself so many questions. As a family, it's actually good to know. And do you think that's why, like, house helps uh, mm -hmm. mostly? Yeah. They have more command on our kids than ourselves. We have made them the default mothers. We have made them the default parents. And we don't motivate them. Funny thing. And the funny thing is, that motherly instinct is in them. They just sleep with these children and do it very well. But your children you always remember that auntie who took care of me. They don't remember their mother, you know. Mm. 10, 20 years down the line, they will remember, I had a very good auntie who used to do this and this and this and this for me. They may not even remember their mother when they're little mother. You know. When your child is in trouble, what do they say? Do they say, I'm in trouble and I must talk to my mother? Or, oh my God, what my mother do? But they are worried of what I will do. No, not that they are running to me for help. Are you safety? The definition of safety to your child. Do they know if I'm in the biggest trouble and I've made my biggest mistake? The first person. The most safe to. person I should go back to. Dad or mom? Yes. But they run to auntie. Of course they run to auntie. And when they are teenagers and they get pregnant, you blame them. Let them and make them safe. But why are parents taking all this everywhere? You are shifting the blame on us. You know, <laughs> you, you, you sound like, are you only advocating for kids? Mercy. You are a parent. See with our eyes also. <laughs> Don't you think we are giving it honestly? I, I think we, we are trying. It's, it's the society, most it's the demands, it's lifestyle. I do agree with you. Most parents are trying. Most parents just don't know how to try harder, you know. You are trying, but you exactly don't know how to try do it. Now, like, current, so what you're talking about with this lockdown and with the kids at home, and, you know, the economy is just upside down. I'm thinking of, no, just a parent who is out, you hustle every day, you know. Yeah. You have to go out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have to go, like, let's talk of uh, vegetable venture, you know, mm -hmm. by four. They're out, yes, the market, mm -hmm. and they're the last ones. Plus, thank for the curfew, thank God. Sorry, anyway, I think I should now from this discussion. I'm like, thank God for the curfew because she will come at least home by, yeah, eight. by eight. Because naturally, he's the last one again to come home. These kids are at home with the neighbors because most of them may not even afford to have a house help or yes. someone to, yes. yeah, so they're on their own. And we are talking of age from maybe months, yes, 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 is an elder sibling. Mm -hmm. who is less than 15 years, mm -hmm. taking care of the rest mm -hmm. in a harsh environment of neighbors who don't care mm -hmm. what your kids mm -hmm. go through, mm -hmm. a neighbor that you don't know yourself, what, what, what are we supposed, I mean, what would you advise? What's the safest? You've told us we are trying, we are not trying hard. How hard can that parent try? I think we are trying hard. I, just don't know the how. I want you to help me <laughs> help this mother. Not the how, not the how yes. <laughs> Quantity time is really important. But when you cannot afford the quantity time, qualify as little that you have. You may not have all that time. Life might have forced you not to have all that time. Yeah. But the little you have, make it quality. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. When you go home and you are tired, try to get a little bit of strength, even if it's for 30 minutes, to be present with this child. Find out the normal thing. How was your day? Mm -hmm. How are you? How was your day? And what did you do with your time? Did you read some books? Did you see your friends? You know, in that normal conversation, it's easy to pick. That even after the child grows up, sorry, yes. yeah. looking back as a child, you value the effort your parents put in. You will always know my mother was very, very busy. But that 10, 15 minutes she got, we had quality. They will actually not crucify you that you didn't spend time with them. So I'm saying if you get a chance, it may yes. not be how you want it, but you actually don't have to make that chance. You have to make small. more. Mm. Quantify it. And when you are present, now be present. Don't be present on the soap. Mm. And you are present yeah. with your child. Mm. You are on your phone. And you know, make it be there. Be intentional. Be there. Let this child know you are being part of because the truth is not all parents will get all that time to spend oh, yeah. that you do. It's not mm. possible. It's not being realistic. Mm. You know. But in that 10, 15 minutes, you're able to do something substantial. The other thing you can do is 
you can get family traditions revolving on making up time or sleeping time. You know, yes. Take the malala by before you sleep. Wow. You call them family traditions. Yes. Yes. Wake them up in the morning. You know, be the one to get them from their beds early in the morning. Ah. Even if you're not able so to you fix their bread, leave a mark. mark. Yes. Yes. Right mark. Make sure you touch them somewhere, at least in a day. Make sure you there's something you did with mm. them. I know of a friend, by the way, uh, she, she was telling me, she has a firstborn, actually, just a one. And she was telling me what one thing she made a commitment mm -hmm. that she will bet her own child herself. Yes. yes. So it doesn't matter at what time she will come home mm -hmm. because she's busy. Yes. But she makes sure every day mm -hmm. she does herself. And that's mm -hmm. born in another person. That's sufficient. Yeah, getting yeah. I, I think she was aware of this already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I think she prepared. She's this other parent of yours. <laughs> Yeah. And that child will always survive the fact that, you know, I it's my mother who is with me. You know, it's mother who wakes me up in the morning. It's my father who wakes me up in the morning. You know, mm. it's my mother who puts me back to bed. And then the family meals. You might be able to do all of them together. But at least if you can have one family meal together each day. For most of us, it's supper. We have been told to eat yeah. a light supper. Mm. But with the kind of our environment and our lifestyles. We end up eating a heavy supper, you know. It's the only meal yeah. that we are actually together. Maybe we even tell know. ourselves we eat light so you eat well <laughs> for supper. <laughs> it's the only really time you have to bond with these children. Mm -hmm. So you end up eating, okay, eat light but eat together, you know. Yeah. Be together, so have, have a moment together. together. Yes, have a eat a meal. Food has a way of bringing people together. You remember the African culture? Mm. When you would go to negotiate the dawah, you would not eat until you have agreed. Yeah. Food bonds people. It brings people together. Mm. So you eat with your children. You will always carry the fact that they had that time together. Mm. Even if something that didn't. Mm. It if will you, be a memorable moment in life. Yes. If you're not present, call them. Talk to them. Don't just call the girl and ask, how are they? Are they fine? Yes. No, talk to the children. Ah, make it a point to talk to the kids. Yes, sir. Mm. Even the small ones who are not yet talking, they hear your voice. They will react to your voice. Interesting. Yes. You can call home and sing to your two month old baby. They will identify with that voice. I know that mom used to sing to me every day she was out of touch. Mm. Nowadays we have video calls. Mm. Let because I'm from a friend of mine, she left her son uh, while well, he was hardly three, mm -hmm. and uh, is now the boy is seven years old. Mm -hmm. She's never come back. Um, I'm not thinking of her. No. Yes. But I'm sure she calls. She does Skype and. Yes. Mm. Establish something that will carry both of you. You know, celebrate family important things together. Now bonding aside, at least those are methods. Uh, I'm glad that there, there is hope for the options. We are not that desperate. Yes, the yeah. options. But now, uh, matters display. And you talked of the essence and the environment. Now that you are away, mm -hmm. and you just want the kids pick, pick, pick. At, at all stage, all levels, and they are growing every yes. day. Same, when you're doing that with the your children, are you able to pick up what they do and you can make that conversation over that. Uh -huh. Who did you meet? What did you say? Uh -huh. And then able to tell them, no, you don't say this to so, uh -huh. so you don't. So you are as part. Yes. You journey with them. Yes. yes. Yeah. And it's what you said. Don't only listen to what people say. Look at what they don't say. Interesting. Yes. What they don't say is more important than they say. Even with children. So they could be keeping quiet. They would choose what to tell you. What like you say. Happen. Oh yeah, we are actually also innately born to make the people we, are, we, we love happy. Mm. It's natural. Yes, mm. and children are very vulnerable, so naturally they know if I make my caregiver happy, I will get good care. They want favors. You know? Yes, they want to be loved. I want to be taken care of well. I make my caregivers happy. That's why even the house girl they do something to their child, and they will not tell you. Yeah. See, mm. they know you look up in the morning and you live with themselves mm. and person. Yeah, yeah. they're always here. Mm. They will not tell you anything. So, you should be quiet. And that's why when they, when they have left your house already, now the kids want to tell you what she yes. used to do. And you're like, why didn't you say this when she was here? Well, they weren't able to. 
they have to make the KG back. But you can pick from the behavior. You will know your child is genuinely happy. That will only happen from what you are saying. If we have a chance, we create yes. time to bond with them. If you know them, you will know they are genuinely happy when they are stressed and they are distressed. You are able to pick, you know, these behaviors. And you are also able to pick gaps in their communication. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. They will give you this mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and, and you're like, like they're, they're looking at each other and there's something people are skipping, they don't tell you. Yes. So you are able to pick, you know. Even discipline, you can still do it when you're not with them. One and one. You can still be able to manage. Uh -huh. Not as effective as yeah, when you're in the house. Yeah. Mm. But you can be able to establish something to bring them up. Now, what, what would you advise of uh, you, you yourself, the advocate for a neighbor, will you be okay? If you found a neighbor displaying your kid or a relative visiting, will you be comfortable? Because I find uh, the other families currently, like you know, it's mm -hmm. many people would be like, no one should touch my kid. If they mess around, report to me or wait for me. In Nairobi, you know you don't even know your neighbor. You know them, but you don't know them. They put it that way. Mm -hmm. A stranger disciplining your child is just abuse. It's abuse. Yes. When I gave the example of a community at home, yes, that whole neighborhood was your family. <laughs> no, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Because you really walk in the compound, you have a mini adult in your house. A teenager is a really mini adult. Mm -hmm. Now you will need to talk things like problems. And I'm thinking a scenario where you have all kids of all age now. I think it's more tricky. When you have the little ones, and you have the teenagers, and of course you yourself, mm -hmm. you need to be boundaries. I think I agree with you. The parental kit is just vital to each family. Of course the younger ones will make nice that you're giving the teenager too much space and too much space, but their age will also allow them to be a little. Because the small ones really want to be cuddled, <coughs> protected, yeah. taken care of. You know, mm. even if in, in word they will say, they actually don't even want that space to ask them. Mm. They don't want that, you know, freedom of mm. your yeah. teenager. They yeah. want to be around you. Mm. So their age will defend you. Yeah. They still come back and cut with you. So parenting is that easy. You made it sound so easy. Parenting uh, is a learning process. <laughs> <laughs> I thought after uh, all this session now, all parents out there, you are equipped. You know? Like, everyone will have perfect kids. Oh, of course you say there are no perfect parents, okay. but you can have perfect kids. One shoe does not fit one. So uh, what are you saying again? That this applies, it depends on Get the value, tailor, make it to the people in your house. My children might like fish, yours might not even want to smell it. So don't force them with fish. That's the thing. Yeah. Mine mm -hmm. might like soda, yours might like fresh juice. I mean, get the value, tailor, make it to the people in your house. Make sure you address people, you actually handle people with who they are. Mm -hmm. They learn from them. Um, mm -hmm. Amazingly, they are all different. We usually do personality tests in, in our office ah. for the fun of it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And you will get that two people have the very same personality composition, wow. but they behave very different. different. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You will never have two people the same. So this applies to kids and even families. Yes, even even twins don't have the same fingerprint. Mm. It doesn't work. Absolutely. It doesn't work. Know the people in your home. Treat them accordingly. I can't treat my firstborn the way I treat my second one. Or the way I treat the younger one. Mm. The values are the same. I have to learn my methods. You know. And there are times you will get defeated with your child until you learn it, you know. Mm, yeah. You, you get defeated. You yeah. get defeated again. And you're like, you like why did you go wrong? Because you're dealing with human beings. I mean, you're dealing with and cars. And kids are not the same. Yes, or cars or books or what. Give it your best. Give it your best. The thing is, give it your best. Yes. Mm, you try Another that. thing about the parenting too. Yes. Self-care. Taking care of yourself. If you don't take care of your mental health, your physical health. Now me as a parent. Yes. yes. You cannot take care of these children. Take care of your make sure you're healthy, you know. Make sure you're happy. And then you're able to handle these people out of, uh, from a place of strength. 
Toya. Mm -hmm. If you are weak, you'll be able to handle it. Children are strong, they actually need strength. Handling kidneys. Strength. Mental strength, mm -hmm. physical strength. You need energy. Yes. Take care of yourself. The number of things we usually have. Do you have a support circle? Do you have a support circle? What do you mean? Support like the family, the spouse, or the family members. Do you have or you people? Need some, yes. Do you have people who you know? If I am breaking apart, I can re rely on. You know. So I do. I'm lucky. Like, I do. And you have a support circle. It's important for every human being to have their own support circle. Your spouse is your support circle. But what happens when you and your spouse are going through the same challenge? You still need someone. Yeah. You still need someone else outside your spouse. You know. Mm -hmm. We all need each other. Support circle, you know, it can be another couple, maybe yeah. you can be an elder couple, it can be your parents, it can be your brothers and sisters, but it's good to have a support circle. That support circle also comes in handy mm -hmm. when you and your children are having conflict. There should be at least one person who your child knows. Mm -hmm. If I run to, if I report my mother to so and so, they will not, not be an issue with the house. You know? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They it should be that right? place of escape. Mm -hmm. Well, they know if I go to so and so and I explain my problem, I will not be victimized. Oh. Children need a gentle. We actually, all human beings need that gentle place where you are sure mm -hmm. here I will not be judged. Mm -hmm. It may not really always happen in the immediate family, but we need that support system. Mm -hmm. Couples, yes, support each other, but there are things that your husband and wife need to do. Yeah. Sure. Even if you are married for eight years. Mm -hmm. No, we never know. You know when we read the romance novels of teenagers, you think they love, <laughs> you know everything about each other, you know. <laughs> it's always flowers and roses mm -hmm. and what on. The truth is, even in marriage, there are things your spouse will never know about you. And there are things you will never know about them. Strange. It happens. Mm -hmm. It's like... Mm -hmm. the, it only becomes an issue when it's something that would really affect all of you. But if it's the normal, normal things, I mean, you know, it's like. So, there are places your spouse may not be able to support you. Mm. Not because they don't want to, but because mm. they can't. They're not able to. Mm. You will need someone. You, you are not comfortable with them. Exactly. Mm. A woman mm. needs other women. A man needs other women. There are those things about your husband. Boys even, if, yeah, yeah, I can't, even if you knew, there's not much you can do about it. Mm -hmm. But if other men sat him down and, you know, they don't play so with the him hate together, mm -hmm. yes, he's able to get that support. So this thing of, uh, I am nuclear family, you know. We keep tight. Yes, we keep tight. And nobody else is allowed. It's so dangerous. Yes. It's bad for your mental health and family. Mm -hmm. You need people that. And also having other couples and other families that your family is close to mm. will teach your children that people are different. Oh, yeah. They usually say your mother's food is the best because you've never eaten any other food. Any other food. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You may not know this is how things are run. Mm. And then you go to there, you go to college mm. and you start wondering why are these people doing things like this? Mm. Families do things differently. Yeah. Your children will never learn that if you don't have that support base. You need guys. Yeah. He needs other men out there. Yeah. You need your parents. You need your siblings. We all need each other. If you raise these children, all this makes us good parents. Yes. So the parental kid. Yes. It's why right there. Yes. And then you leave work. Take care of yourself. So you are feeding no more. Seriously. Mm -hmm. Go for that massage. Go for that massage. <laughs> <laughs> But you said we run home and take care of kids. We take a lot of time for our own. I said quantity. Uh, what you say? Quality. You know, quality. Yeah. Yes. Quality. Quantify whatever you have. Mm. If you have all the time, yeah, you are lucky. If you don't have all the time, but again, I'm thinking that some things you can do plus the, the whole family. Of course. Yeah. You can yeah. both soak your. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Soak our feet. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But they always say, even parents need to meet. Just that time you are home, yeah. away from your work, away from your books, away from your children, away from, you know, mm -hmm. all that. Just you. Yes. You still need to be selfish. Apart from, you know, you usually ask who are you. Mm -hmm. 
I am a career woman. Na, 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 na. Apart from all those other descriptions, who are you? You need you. You know, you need me time. The way I was telling you, you asked me, I don't know, I'm a mother, I'm a wife. I'm like, how do you, I mean, those things are so many. <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a sister, I'm a daughter. Oh, yeah. I'm a nephew, I'm a niece, I'm a cousin, you know, I'm all these things. But who are you? But I'm also me, you know. Actually, me, I have a habit of listening to silence. I love silence. Switch off. Yes. You can find me very much alone. Meditation. meditation. No, I'm listening to silence. What do you mean? Yes. Are you really okay? <laughs> I mean, you need help. I'm no one. When, when it's persistent. <laughs> yeah, yes. I, I, I read something like that. Anyway, you, you need to check your, your mental health. I mean, don't let it swallow you. Seek help. Reach out. <laughs> I think that page of a group on Facebook. On introverts. Oh, introverts, yeah. Are you an introvert? You? No, you're not. No, no. Unless I don't know. <laughs> Story for another day. You don't look an introvert. An introvert short. Stop asking me what is wrong with me when I get back. Do I ask you what is wrong with you when you when want you to talk? Yes. <laughs> no, but now I'm just alone listening to silence. Yeah. No. Yes. Sounds weird. I'm an introvert not because I don't. Not yeah. because I talk less. Me, I can't try that. Um, the difference between an introvert and an extrovert is actually where you get your strength. Extroverts get their strength from the masses, from the people. Me. Introverts get their strength from the silent type. So you can have an introvert who talks a lot, uh, yeah. but they don't get their strength yeah. from the ears. Mm -hmm. If anything, it drains. So when they're alone and they sit in silence, then they're able to rejuvenate. So actually we need to know ourselves so that you, you know yes. where to draw your energy from. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you're an introvert, actually you need a quiet time. Mm -hmm. At least take 10 minutes in a day. Just sit alone, even in the middle of the night. It makes a difference. Rejuvenate yourself. If you're an extrovert, stop looking yourself in the room alone. It I makes you even a better cat. Go outside there and meet people and make all the noise in the world. Get that strength, you know. And remember you said, happy parent, what, how did you put it? Happy parent, happy children? Yes, happy oh. parent, happy children, is true. And they don't get stress from you. You are able to transfer the happy parents to the children. Mm -hmm. You're able to have... So your children are more of a reflection of who you are. It's you as parents. So when you're out here, we we'll be telling us how my kid is so hard in the house and blah, 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 blah. It's a reflection. Check yourself. Stand in front of that mirror and be true to yourself. Be honest. Think about it. Your children are genetically you, aren't they? They are. When it comes to the genes, they're not yeah. about anything else. Biologically, mm. they are 50%, you and 50% the other spouse. Yeah. So why do you think there are things that they're not you? We always take the good ones, sleep. We will check it. The bad, bad ones you must have picked from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and both of us do the same, so you're like... <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> That's when a child was up and asking me, 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 me. Ah, that I went bole. You mean this kids talk too much? <laughs> you know what I told you? We are raising kids in the digital era. These kids want it. They are not you when you are growing up. So parents should be informed. Praise them in that generation, not in the generation. They want information, they want to know. And the kids nowadays will talk. You will talk, they will talk. So parental kids, discipline, yes. create boundaries. Communication, Communication. keep yes. the lights open. Yes. And clear. Stress and, and emotion management. Stress, Stress and, and emotion, emotion management. management. Very, very Yes. What do you do when you're stressed? Now it's my time to ask questions. What do you do when you're stressed? I don't get stressed. <laughs> Just stress again. Uh, uh, Stop stressing my stress. No. <laughs> <laughs> click. <laughs> I'll click until my time is cut off. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know. How do I even describe the feeling? You need to find me stressed. <laughs> so, yes. You know, you know, click, you're, 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 I can't click. Yeah, I click over nothing. I mean, I want to hit everything around me. I'm like, <coughs> you get? Mm, I'm that type, I'm stressed. Or uh, sometimes I may not click. Okay, clicking when I'm irritated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I'm stressed, uh, I get worked up. You know? Mm -hmm. I'm like, do I even listen to you? I get so irritated over small things. And even them, I don't want them near me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, keep off. Mm -hmm. 
So if they don't kill me and they want their teenagers, mm -hmm. that it is. No. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>